Hi everyone, welcome to a video from Magical Worlds by Joanna Basford. I'm doing so many of these at the moment. It's just such fun to have the new book and to be doing all sorts of pages from it. Now this is, um, as you can see, Little House Street Lamp. Um, I haven't really thought too much about how to colour it, but I've got my Stedler um, design journey because I haven't tried them in here. I thought I had. But I actually used my Ergosoft on a different page, so I haven't used them yet. So we're going to have a go, we're going to do some of the flowers and then just sort of see where we go from there. Now I'm looking at this little island bit down here and we have got a line around the edge, which means that there is, we do need a little bit of a background behind here. Now I'm not, I had thought maybe I could do it green because I think that would look quite pretty rather than doing it in a... Um, a sort of brown like earth. I think a green colour is nicer. So I'm just having a look at the greens that we've got and I'm thinking maybe the green earth which is the number 55 could be a good choice because it's quite dark and I think the other things might stand out with this as a background. Now I'm just going to put down a bit of this while I'm starting really. I'm not, I don't want to lay it down really thickly I'm just doing a sort of medium um, amount, I would say. And I'm hoping that, you know, if I do the leaves and the flowers in sort of slightly paler colours, then they'll stand out from this um, sort of backgroundy bit. And it's nothing too um, tricky. It's just a la one layer of colour. I've just got to figure out where to put it in there, for example. And uh, yeah, just do this bit first. So it's quite a cute little page, I thought. I haven't thought about the sky because we've got um, stars and moon going on. So we've got a sort of night sky. So we've got to think about that. But I guess it's sort of floating island. Um, so we could do a sort of whole pastely background going on behind it as if it's in this sort of floating in the sky that is a possible possibility I might sure have a little think as as the picture develops whether that's the way I want to go now if you don't have these pencils I know not everyone does um, I have some comparison charts of the colors but you can just pick your own sort of darkish green if you um, wish to, I would say um, anything that's going to be darker than the colours you choose for your leaves, really. Not too intense. You don't want like um, a sort of, say, polychromos. You don't want to go for your um, pine green or your cobalt, blue, um, cobalt green deep. Um, or if you're going for your prismas, don't go for your dark green but go for something that's going to be darker than your leaves, as I said before. Um, and I'm going to do the leaves quite light. I want this to be sort of quite light, bright and pretty. Um, it's the last page that I did, um, which if I put these videos out in order, was the tortoise slash turtle. I called it the tortoise, but I realised that when I wrote my... Um, colour colouring book index page I called it a turtle I don't suppose it matters that much but I did that page in very muted colours so I wanted to do something really different on this page and do something really light and pretty now if you want your background to be really even the best method is to do little circular movements I try and remember to do that and do it as much as I can but sometimes when you're in really small spaces you can't always just do it like that and sometimes it doesn't matter that much in a small space you can't really see so much it's when you're coloring a really big space that I find that it becomes for me more difficult to get a more even color but to be honest I find it's always better to try to do an uneven color because then it looks intentional. If you try and do something even, it's really difficult to get it even. If you do it uneven, it's much easier. 
so uh, if I'm doing a larger area I try not to do try and make it flat and even I mean you can do it if you've got like an alcohol marker or some paint a Posca pen you can can get a really even flat color and that is something that I really wanted to achieve when I first started coloring I I wanted to get a really flat even background on a picture but now I realize that actually that not only is that really difficult it isn't always particularly interesting or nice if you're doing like a night sky and you want it just black so that or a black background so your page pops out that's fine that that does look okay but sometimes you know just a plain red or a plain blue background doesn't always um, look as good as one that's slightly different colors or shades so uh, it can be so my sort of wish for being able to achieve this completely flat coloured background as soon as I was able to achieve it this was with Posca pens I actually decided I didn't really like it <laughs> so that was uh, interesting but I actually as you probably know prefer a pastel background not only is it much much quicker I find Posca pen very slow it's much much quicker but also you can blend them nicely and get a mix of colours and I just find you can make something that looks rather pretty and uh, yeah not too much not not too tricky right we're getting down to little bits here now what I'm going to do is I'm bound to miss some areas here so I'm going to um, keep this pencil handy so when I'm coloring in my flowers I can just grab it because I know that I'm going to need it because I'm bound to miss a few bits it doesn't really matter. Now I hope everyone's enjoying the new book but I know there'll be some of you that haven't got it yet and I'm sorry and I hope it comes soon or there'll be people who haven't got the book and I guess you probably won't be watching this video if you haven't got the book or you might just be listening along and not colouring along but um, I think I hope you'll understand the sort of excitement and enthusiasm for the new book. I was looking back over something that I wrote to someone, a message, and I'd said that I was going to try, I had thought that I might record every page of the new book. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've already coloured some of the pages not on camera, but if you want a page that I've coloured already, then I can always get another copy um, to do that with. But at the moment, I'm just sort of decided that I will colour. There are a few pages that I probably won't do, um, wouldn't do record because they just they didn't seem to work as a video somehow. Like um, you know, like this page, really detailed. Probably won't. And I've done this page, the intro page. I was going to do the corners as videos but then I didn't and um, I'm in the middle of this page. I might record a few little bits but um, I might do the, record the pumpkin actually to put out near Halloween but because um, I'm recording this, when you get this video it'll be November but um, it isn't Halloween yet. I'm, uh, I'm storming ahead actually. Um, I just want to colour and uh, I just think might as well record quite a lot of the pages but the ones with the little details like I showed you that one and the one with all the potion bottles and the one with all the different leaves I'm not sure that I can make an exciting video so I thought I'd just do them on my own but I know they're daunting pages for people right that's all I'm going to do at the minute with that background green now let's do some flowers we've got a big nice range of different colours. I am going to grab the 23. I really like this pencil. Oh, this colour. I'll try and... uh, here we go. And I'm going to do the centre. These really large flowers. I can come in a little bit but I want to just keep do all the three large flowers at once. And I'm going to do this sort of very centre bit with a bit more intensity. So I'm going to layer it up a little bit and then sort of taper it off and I'm going to go over those dots because um, 
it's too difficult to colour neatly around them, particularly with these slightly smaller pointed pencils. I find it's harder to get a neat um, finish type thing. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do the same as that on all of them. Got a little gap here and here. I think I'm just going to put the pink in it because there might be a petal underneath. If there isn't, there might be a leaf underneath or there might be the green underneath. And I think it just gets a little bit, it draws the eye in a way that I don't want to if I put green there. Maybe it sounds a bit odd, but I just want it pink. But you can make it green if you wish. Don't worry about these dots. We'll come back to those. We'll put something on there. They will stand back out again. But we're just going to concentrate on the petals. Now I have used quite a few different types of pencils in this book so far. I have used Ergosoft's, I have used Prismas, Polychromos, Chromaflow, Castle Arts Gold and they've all come out very nicely. So that's great news. Um, I haven't tried Castle Arts Soft Touch. I can't see why they wouldn't work as all those other brands have worked well. I haven't tried my Posca's Holbein's. There's quite a few I haven't tried yet. Um, I haven't got many whole binds. I might not try them in here because I've only got the few pastel shades. We'll see. Maybe I could do them for the butterflies. I don't know. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's a bit scruffy. I'm going to see if I can get away with it. I might not be able to. But once I put my other colour on top, it might sort it I don't know if I'm going to be able to we'll see um so yes I've I've tried out quite a few different brands and I'm happy with how it's all laying down someone um Rabia said to me that she had uses pens like water-based markers and she's found the paper is really good for pens um and she said she found that Johanna's last couple of books were a bit too toothy and weren't particularly good for pens whereas she thinks this one is the paper is smoother and she's really excited by it i can't say i've noticed a huge difference personally but um i'm certainly noticing it works with all pencils but i think johanna's books generally are paper is generally pretty good all round type paper but i know some people Particularly the American versions of Rooms of Wonder, maybe it was. People were a bit disappointed with the paper being a bit too smooth, I seem to remember. But, um, I don't know. I, I think the only paper of hers I had a problem with was her Secret Garden, her very first book. And I had the very first edition of the first book and the paper was really toothy and it was a bit odd. It, fe it feels like it's almost, um, um, I don't want to say breaking up. I'm going to 25. I'm going to finish them off with 25. It, it sort of feels like it's, yeah, it does feel like it's sort of breaking down a little bit. It's very weird. Um, but um, as I say, it's that's the old, it's a different publisher, um, she, that was Lawrence King. And um, yeah, she changed the paper quite soon. I think once her books were popular enough, she could ask her publisher to make changes, especially she got feedback about the paper saying it wasn't the best. You know, I think she wanted to. So the second printing of that book was different paper and um, her second book was different paper and then they're, they're being printed in even different paper now than that. So uh, it's just a matter of, um, you know, responding to feedback, which she's very good at in that she tries to 
I think she, it's quite easy for her to see what pictures people like because they're the pictures that are coloured the most from her books that she might see coloured on social media and on her colouring gallery on her website. So I think that can influence her a little bit. But also um, feedback like such as the paper and things going into the spine which were difficult for her to... Um, people couldn't colour when when get the pencils right into the spine of the book so she um, limited what she was doing there and actually this book only has a couple of double page spreads um, which I think people find daunting anyway one is the really detailed sort of underwatery one which um, I'm a bit daunted by I have to say oops Got pencil caught under my sleeve and the other one is the at the front that I showed you, the tips introduction page and tips page, that one. So there are just a few. So it's not... I mean, you could make double pages out of some of them. Not this page, I don't think. But um, if you wanted to sort of match the colours across from one side to the other, you could do it even if the pages don't match. I've got a moth on the other side. We could do the moth with these sorts of colours if we wanted to. Um, I probably wouldn't, but, you know... You could match them up if you, and maybe do with the same background or something like that, you know. There are ways of sort of matching things up. But um, it, I think the double page spreads can be quite daunting. And uh, I'm quite pleased not to have many of them, to be honest. I always find when I'm colouring, say, Hannah Carlson, and in her Spirit Animals book, Every page is a double page, really. This is the black, number nine. And I'm going to do the centre. And all of these. Um, yeah, so in Spirit Animals, because you've got, you've got the person on one side with the sort of link to the animal, and then the animal on the other side, generally. There are a few pages where things are a little bit different. But you have to really colour both at once, I always feel, because I want to match my colours and my, you know, use the same pencil set, use the same colours and things like that. And so I have to be in the mood for a double page spread to tackle a page in that book. And that's absolutely fine, um, because I'm lucky I've got lots of Hannah Carlson books that I'm working through. So if I'm not in the mood for a double, I've got lots of other options. So that is good. There we go. Now these aren't particularly evenly coloured, are they? I don't know whether that... It's probably just me rushing a little bit. I'm just going to um, try and darken a few bits. But um, so that the, like, that centre is a bit lighter. Um, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, there we go. Now, we have these flowers. Um, let me see where they all are. I've got... I can come down a little bit because I think you can see them all here. I'm going to do them in the sort of purples, I think. So I'm going to start whoops, with the number six. I think this is the violet. Yeah. I'm going to do the same sort of colouring technique as with the others, so dark here and getting lighter and then I'll put my lighter colour on the tip. I'm looking forward to um, Johanna's um, book launch um, videos. Um, I would have seen them by now, by the time this video goes out I would have watched them all. I'm sure. I don't know what time of day they're going to go out. She used to always put her stuff out at a particular time of day, um, especially when she did lives. But I know she hasn't, this isn't a live, she's just doing, she's pre recorded them. I think it's a good idea because um, actually, Scotland might not be the same, but this week in England, the book launch week in England is um, half term, so the children are off school, so she would be possibly struggling for childcare but um, I think Scotland 
Scotland school hours are a bit different to England. They tend to go back a little bit earlier in the summer and therefore their half term is a little bit earlier, I think. So it might be a bit different. But anyway, I think it means she doesn't have to worry. Also, I think she does the school run, stuff like that. So uh, there's all that to think about. So it means she doesn't have to worry. But I don't know if she's got any lives planned. Sometimes she has a live with Emily Illustrator or with Susan Wimpenny Berry or even with Barbara Colour. This is 62. But I haven't seen anything like that advertised. I'm not very much... Usually um, Barbara and Suzanne advertise it in the Johanna Basford Your Pages Facebook group but I haven't been in there for ages. Um, just haven't had time to be in there. Um, I Actually I had a quick look at some pictures in there to see what people were posting but um, I haven't really looked at the admin posts or anything like that lately. Oh I missed one. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Going back to the darker violet, the, um, the six, to do the middle of this. We need some, it's the, um, only the, um, what time of October, it is the 27th of October today, and uh, we changed our clocks um, this weekend, last night, and I woke up stupidly early, like, it was, um, it was up as four on my, I looked, which means it was half past five real time, which was still stupidly early. I was like, ugh. And so uh, my son did as well. I think I woke him up, which uh, is a bit irritating because he's tired now. And he's got stuff he should be doing. <sighs> well, I was trying not to wake him up so he can get enough sleep so he can focus. Oh, this one. But anyway, he, um, I, um, I'm feeling a bit sleepy now, but I couldn't go back to sleep. I just felt wide awake. It was very weird, and I was hungry, and I just got up in the end. Now, we have these little bells. Let's go up a bit so you can see them. They're very pretty. And there's a few here. Can you see them? Yeah. And then some here. I'm going to do those in a nice blue. Um, I'm just looking at my blues on my swatch chart because I want something pretty and delicate. I think I'm going to go with a pastel blue, which is number 302. Now, I do have a um, sheet with the names of all these pencils because they're not written on the pencils. But you can grab them off the Stedler website if you know how. It's a little bit tricky because what you have to do, you go into Stedler's website, you look up this pencil set and it has a little grid with all the um, colours. And if you roll over a certain colour, it will tell you its number and name. It's not easy to find, so I put together a little chart so that you could just refer to that instead because I thought that would be a lot easier than trying to, uh, trying to find it on the website. And... Uh, People might not know how to find the website anyway. But it's quite nice knowing the pencil names, I always think. It makes it I think it's more memorable than a number. Although I was watching a Emily Illustrator the other day and she was giving out the numbers rather than the names of the um what was she using? Prismas. Now we've got this, this and this. Now, are they buds of a flower we've done already? I don't know. I'm going to just colour them in a slightly different colour just for fun. So I'm going to use 61 and just colour them in that. And I think I'm just going to go around the edge in a bit darker colour. And sort of fade it a bit towards the middle. Like that. Same on this one. Okay. 
Um, I think that's all the flowers, so it's time for leaves. Now I've decided that for the leaves, I'm going to do them all the same with the same two greens because I think it will bring it all together a little bit and uh, help the pinks and purples to stand out. So I'm going to start with number five and I'm going to do the sort of base of each leaf with this and then fade it off a bit and then we'll come in with another colour to do the tips. Now I'm going to go quite fast and it'll probably be too fast for you but because I'm doing the same on every one then you can pause and catch up or whatever you don't need to watch in detail or you can do yours you might feel like you want to do yours in different colours anyway so uh, because I'm just doing the same thing I don't think it needs to be slow um, for you but you can also sort of catch up afterwards if you want to try it and keep up but um, anyway so what else is there to tell you I had a nice day yesterday it's Sunday today um, and I uh, had my favourite programme on yesterday I love um, Strictly Come Dancing it's uh, I think most other countries call it Dancing with the Stars um, which is a much better name I think although we don't really use the word stars to talk about celebrities we'd call them celebrities so maybe it wouldn't I haven't done the middles of the purple ones have I maybe it wouldn't work in the UK but um, we used to have a program when I was little called Come Dancing which is sort of based on in the sense well Come Dancing was very different it was the it was competitions between different regions of the country. I don't know if it was all across the UK or just England. I don't know. And uh, they would compete. So you would have different dances. So you might have a... Uh, you'd usually have a Latin and a ballroom. You might have a waltz one week and a foxtrot the other. That sort of thing. And then... Um, yeah, you'd have Latin as well. So you might have a jive or a cha-cha or whatever and then you would have um, the, a group dance where you would have um, say probably a dozen or more people dancing together and they used to be um, really quite interesting especially you know they would you would watch from above or the sides and they would you know sort of either all do the same movements or it will synchronize all their dancing it used to be really quite good well choreographed and I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. Um, so I would love watching that as a child, but because we didn't have a video, we didn't have video recorders when I was young. Um, they were always on really late, so I was only allowed to watch them if it was school holidays. So uh, it was really nice to. Um, so when this Strictly Come Dancing came along, when it first came on, um, it's 20 years ago. I yeah. Uh, I didn't watch the first series because um, I was watching the other side. There was a, a pop stars, the rivals or something, I can't remember, was on. I was watching that instead. And um, I thought it would be a bit naff and silly, you know. But I watched the second series and I just got into it and I've always watched it, never miss it. So uh, I think what I like about it as well as the watching them learn to dance and that sort of thing, is just the fact that it's such a happy, positive show. You know, everybody is competing, but they're always nice to each other, supportive of each other, that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, and it's just, it's just always comes, it's family friendly and that sort of thing. And it was the Halloween special that I was watching last night. And uh, the costumes and makeup and hair is just always, it's always very good anyway. But when it comes to a Halloween, it was just, you know, amazing. Um, we had sort of, we had pirates, we had Frankenstein's monster, we had devils, ghosts, um, sort of zombie-ish characters. Um, what else did we have? 
but it's never too scary because I don't like scary Halloween stuff and it isn't there's they sometimes do a bit in the BT where they're scaring each other a bit but um, it's not too much scary because they know kids watch but I remember as a child I used to get so easily scared I hated Halloween because they would put stuff on TV shows that would frighten me and uh, I didn't like it at all very I'm sort of always been very jumpy and stuff like that so I didn't like it but uh, this is always done in, in a child friendly way family friendly which I like Right, I've done that quite quickly. I'm going to do the middles of the purple ones because I might forget otherwise. I'm going to use number 633. It is called um, Slate Blue, but I always think it's rather good for a purple flower. There we go. And my last colour for today is going to be the 50 and I'm going to finish off all my leaves with this. I'm actually just going to put a layer of it over the top of all of them. Now if you want to you can layer this up lots of times so that you get a really deep and intense colour. You do need to be careful with the staedtlers because they're quite hard. If you push down too hard you're going to indent your page. Um, so you need to gently layer like I am here. Yeah, I'm just going over and over without too much pressure. If you try and push down and get a lot of immediate colour, then you're going to spoil it. And um, so you need to be quite careful. Now, with our background bit in green here, you could do some shadows around your plants to make it look like, you know, make them look slightly more three-dimensional. I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's necessary and I don't think I'll enjoy doing it. I think it could look absolutely stunning, but I don't, for me personally, I don't think it's going to be worth the effort to do it to... Uh, I don't think I'll make it look good enough to make me think that it was worth it, if you know what I mean. But some people can... I need to practice more. I look at some people's pictures and they can get such an amazing three-dimensional effect from putting lots of black around things and shadowing and things, and I haven't quite mastered that yet. I do try it sometimes, but it's not there. So um, I... Uh, I uh, I haven't, um, I'm not going to try it on this page, especially with these pencils. I think you need a more intensely coloured pencil to get that definition of shadow in, you know, lots of black and things like that. Um, so I think it would work better with a polychromos or a Prismacolor, something like that, rather than these slightly hard, softer colours, hard pencil, softer colours type thing going on. But I still think they are quite pretty. Just have my washing machine finish. I think someone's attending to it, which is rather kind of them. Um, so my husband is helping my son applying for placements. My son's like he doesn't know who to address his emails to for the placement. You know. So I sent him a few companies that I thought might be good to approach, but my husband's sort of showing him how to find, like, who to write to. I'm just going to use my other green to do that. I missed a bit. Because um, uh, he, um, he's gone on to um, LinkedIn and he's looking at their websites and stuff and it's trying to work out who to address the, like, when um, when I was applying for this sort of thing, I would have written a letter and posted it out and written to whom it may concern type thing. Or But he's like, no, we've got no reason to do that anymore because we can look up the company. It, they should tell you who to get in touch with type thing. So uh, that's... Uh, 
but he's writing off, he's going to write off about 30 companies I think initially. But he wants to try and stay local. He knows that he can go a little bit further afield if he takes the train or the bus, but ideally he doesn't want a hugely long commute and I don't blame him. There are a couple of companies in our town that I find, found that might be able to do it and for my other son as well but um, it might be that they have to go to the next town or the places that they actually go to uni the towns they go there um, because they are they're bigger so there's going to be more companies there although there are some smaller towns outside of here which have some potential accountancy companies that my one son might like to go to so uh, he might be doing that I don't know right before we finish I'm going to use some white pen on my flowers and then we're going to do another video um, for the rest I'm going to use my Jelly Roll 8 now whoops I'll drop it you know either way now the um, white pens show up very well on Stedlers in that um, they don't, um, I'm going to put a little line of dots around the edge of this one, in that they don't change colour. Um, certain pencils will change colour if you put white on top, but Stedlers don't, which is always nice, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's always good. Um, these dots around here on those and then yeah I'm just going to keep each one similar to each other it's only a few touches now if you wish to you might want to go back over some of it or all of it make it more defined um, particularly the background bit um, how did I do that like that um, I think I'm okay with it, but I'll have a look at it in more detail in a second. These don't really show up on this blue. Um, yeah, I think some of my background could probably do with another layer. I might do that, um, but not on video. So I think I'm going to grab this 55 in between videos and just go back over that background just to make it a bit darker and deeper. Um, you could do that too if you wish or you don't have to. It depends how yours looks really. Um, I can see that mine's a bit lighter here and here. So I'm just going to have a little go with that before I sort of finish up entirely. But tomorrow's video will do the house and the light and we'll do something for the background as well. Something really straightforward and easy with some soft pastels. Okay, but for now, thank you for watching. Hope that you have a super day and happy colouring.